that's really how a brick and mortar store can compete with Walmazon is we can do that internet can't. Hi, I'm Troy with This Is Over the Edge, the original Over the Edge in Fruita, Colorado. Funny thing, 25 years ago, I swore that I would finish that piece of molding on those windows, but we opened a bike shop April 23rd, 1995, and I never finished. <laughs> <laughs> so you're the founder. Yeah, I am the founder. I'm the founder, the whatever, mental instigation of this project. So this building was empty in 94 and we bought it for a song because the town was broke and we started remodeling this thing and with the idea of opening a bike shop in Fruita, Colorado. Knowing that we needed to build some trails along the way or no one would ever come here. So we simultaneously would remodel this building in the mornings and then go out to 18 Road and started digging some single track in the desert north of town and that's where Over the Edge was born. So this building was built in 1906 and it was originally built as A.B. Timmerman's Furniture and Undertaking, which means that in, a, in those days you would build furniture out of wood in the front. Another thing that needed to be built out of wood was boxes where dead people live and that's the back of the building was, <laughs> was a place for caskets and undertaking. In the early days, we ended the building right here because when you open a bike shop in a bankrupt town in 95, it probably don't need a lot of square footage. But instantly, as so many people are gonna know that we're, they're watching this because they were the people that came, that showed up. They were driving towards Moab. They heard wind, the rumor that there was a, some trails being built in Fruita and they started getting off the interstate and walking in the front door. And that really led to the whole over the edge history. We really weren't a bunch of business people that knew what we were doing. We were passionate trail builders, bike people, and we learned the rest as we went along. And it's always been built about, it, this has been built on people that chose to support people. And 25 years later, in a world of internet sales and oligarchies, Over the Edge is still so supported by you guys, the people, and it's, it's really beautiful. Thank you. Well, yeah, this is uh, the museum that came out of the fact that we just had some cool things that we found when we were cleaning out this building. Up in the front, you'll see some old 1940s Schwinn's and early bikes from that area. 1946 Murray over there that weighs about 80 pounds. Try hooking that thing to the ceiling. One of the first Rocky Mountains, one of the first three ever built. Rocky, uh, Mercedes-Benz AMP. The AMP design kind of set the tone for rear suspension in the mountain bike world, even to this day. It's now called the FSR patent. <laughs> this is one of the two intense full suspensions that were built for the trade show and not really ever meant to ride. It has air shifting, Shimano <laughs> air shifting. One of the brilliant ideas that never quite stuck around because it doesn't work. And we just, we get that bike right there is what Ross Schnell won the single speed worlds in Durango and wanted on that bike right there. Ross is one of the owners of, of this store. So Over the Edges are all locally owned and I work with all the stores as the founder of Over the Edge. I no longer work in the store or run the store. I just support the brand and the efforts of all of these guys doing this. So then it started to grow and we knocked that wall out. That's the office. Man, they moved the shop back here. And now these guys are one of the top service departments in the industry. The beauty of Over the Edge, what Dan does for you, is you come in here with whatever problem, and I hear this all day long. When I walk around town, still people pull me up and say, hey, you're Troy, which I always think's funny because I know that. But they say, hey, you're Troy. And then they love to tell me, you know what I love about your store? Is I went in there because I had this really obscure problem with my hydraulics or whatever, and expecting to be told, they're gonna order a part or come back in a few days or two weeks or whatever bike shops say. These guys say, go get yourself a coffee, go eat lunch, I'll have this fixed for you in an hour. And they do that all day long. And that's really how a brick and mortar store can compete with Walmazon is we can do that, internet can't. So that's the best service department in the world right there. Cheers to Dan and Dan and company. When we started this, there wasn't even glass in the front. The building was designed for glass in the front, but it had been boarded up and we got this glass out of the Coast to Coast store in Montrose, Colorado and put the windows back in the front of the store. 
This wall, we just decided to have people write on it that were VIP visitors, and I thought, here, give them a ladder and a Sharpie and we'll let them autograph the wall. And they got creative, like Scott Nickel, who redrew the FU into a whole bunch of different little meanings. Bunch of cool people wrote on the wall. Windows are still unfinished. And uh, yeah, that's, I don't know what's, that's the original batch of Noli bikes, Noel Buckley out of Vancouver. We just really kind of want to embrace the history of what made mountain biking cool. And I think the coolest thing about mountain biking is parallel with over the edge. Like we're in a world of big businesses and a lot of investment in big things and money. That's really not the core of this thing. It was people doing weird, renegade, passionate ideas like building trails in Fruta and opening a bike shop in Fruta. It's people like Scott Nickel that built a bike in a fruit warehouse in Occidental, California and became Ibis that we all know today. It's passion. It's people loving people and I'm proud to be a part of a world that is still about that, right? It's uh, we're really faced in 2020 with a lot of options, you know? Humans are pushed to the back burner, money is everything. That's really not the truth, and I think the mountain biker understands that more than anything. Broken. That's why it has so many stickers. Oh, that's a window? <laughs> yeah, it's a window. Yeah, and so the glass is really broken, but you wouldn't know it because <laughs> it's covered with 25 years of, of mountain bike stickers. Yeah. The bathroom is a hall of fame. Andy Hampton autographed that poster for me. And that's the original Tour de Trump from 1989. Yeah, I worked this race as a Shimano neutral tech support. Speaking of that, this, this is our covers with Bike Magazine, who has just recently come under the scrutiny of a financial devaluation and it's being said that they're not worth keeping around. They are worth that such a beautiful history. Bike Magazine came here from the beginning as media does and really helped us reach what we wanted to accomplish and that's just to get this word out that I just said to the mountain bike audience that we're here for you and we've got your back and you should come ride with us. And that really is so much more than a printed magazine. It's the fact that they believed in young fledgling businesses, destinations like myself, riders. They supported the this community that's mountain biking and that's really the beauty of media. Brian Reapy, Mountain Flyer, still doing it, still alive. So we go to the office? Yeah empty. Oh wow. <laughs> I've been walking down those stairs when one broke. It'll knock you on your oh, oh, yeah. ass. up here working. <laughs> oh, hey, hey, how's, how's it going? going? Yeah, it's not for tall people. You can't work it over the edge if you're over 6'6". Six, six. It's <laughs> impossible. <laughs> it's not allowed. Luckily yeah. I'm not. But this is, this is the bathroom. This didn't exist when we bought this building. We had to put oh, a bathroom wow. in it. And uh, yeah, this is the helm of the whole thing. This is how you catch a shoplifter. You watch him from the office. Oh, that's, that's the real camera. <laughs> yeah, so Over the Edge started in Fruta, 95. And as we, in 95, there really weren't mountain bike destinations, hardly. There, well, there was a Moab, Crested Butte, um, a few places around. I mean, the sport was, was fledgling and small. So as we dealt with trail building and not being supported by the federal government. We had to really delve into fighting for the right to party. We went to a lot of meetings with federal land managers and kind of really started to fight our way through being legitimized as a sport and being able to build trails specifically for mountain bike purposes. As we went through all those things in the 90s and early 2000s, other locations started, you know, other places in the world started to look at us and say, wow, that as we kind of want to know what we should do with mountain biking, who do we ask? And they started to come to me and ask, you know, could we help? And uh, so I started working in other communities as an advisor, as a coach, as a friend, to help them understand their role in mountain bike tourism. As those things went on, people would then want to open a bike shop, like uh, Melrose, Australia. I went there in 2004, was my first time there. And as that started to take hold and we started to build trails and Imba got involved in Melrose, there wasn't a bike shop. And so a couple guys, Rich and Alster, came to me and said, we, need, we should start a bike shop. And I said, yes, you definitely should. 
and they said, well, we want it to be an over the edge. And I was like, I definitely don't know how to do that. Twelve years later, thirteen years later, they've been in business, and uh, for thirteen years we've never had a legal contract, and we've done an awesome thing in Melrose, which is one of the top destinations in Australia. Just won access and prioritization of their national park, and so we just started to help. We had the background, we had the experience, we kind of knew how to stand up to the federal government. It's a terrifying thing for a mountain biker to to meet with the BLM and you know, really say we have rights here and we're not just going to go away. It's pretty amazing that in 1995 mountain biking was viewed as a flash in the pan and it was going to go away. And here we stand in 2020, not gone away. It's the hottest rec sport in the outdoors. And uh, that took a lot of learning and trail building. You think of who's building trails in the world today. The Romans of today are the mountain bike trail building community. If you, I mean, you've been around for a while, you've seen the sport grow, change. Uh, if there is one message you could give to the future of mountain biking, what would it be? That it's, realize this family that you're a part of. Realize that this thing is about people challenging themselves, experiencing that together. It's really what has made the sport beautiful. It's, it's not the shiniest equipment. It's not the blingy stuff. It's that moment where you're at the crest of something and you're terrified, but you allow yourself to let go of the brakes and give it a shot. And your friends are there supporting you, maybe even spotting you at the bottom. And it's, it's that camaraderie. It's camaraderie with each other as mountain bikes mountain bikers, it's camaraderie with the, the environment around it. It's really a, it's a sport of beauty because it's internally challenging and it's allowing us to go places that are magical. Like, it's the best way to go see the world of out of doors right now is on a mountain bike. We want to really be kind and beautiful to each other and I think support local. You got to dig deep and you got to see more reasons than just convenience. It's about supporting the world you want to live in and you want to be able to walk into places like this and have those guys actually love you it's what it's about we love you troy <laughs> love you. <laughs> yeah well thanks so much troy we appreciate it thank you thanks for being here